Hello, everyone. Hola a todos que nos están sintonizando. I will introduce you in Spanish. Yes. <laughs> Hola a todos eh, en la comunidad de Dakaimi. Estamos eh, haciendo una entrevista grabada para, de, con los instructores de One Energy eh, Institute, Delphine Xu y Jingdai. Hello, everyone. Hello. We're Hello. Uh, introducing Delphine Xu and Jingdai uh, from One Energy Institute, the, who are going to uh, talk about uh, the new retreat they are uh, going to give us in February and uh, what it will be about. And uh, also, I would like to uh, uh, ask them to, to tell us about them a little. Hello, uh, Delphine and Jing. Thanks you very much for this interview. I would like to give you the the microphone, the, the speaker, and let you uh, tell us. First, I, I wish you to tell us uh, something about yourselves, how you learned Chinen, how has been your experience, and how you started with all of this. Hi, everyone. Um, thank you for uh, invite us to this interview and give us a chance to talk to everyone about uh, uh, to introduce a little bit about ourselves and also the coming retreat. We are very excited and uh, very grateful. So I think um, first let us to maybe share a little bit of our story. Awesome. So everyone let, us, let you guys um, know a little bit about who we are <laughs> and what we're doing. I think uh, always lady first. <laughs> oh, me? Sure, no problem. Um, so, hi everyone, my name is Delphine, and of course, this is not my original Chinese name. <laughs> That's okay, it's easy for everybody to, you know, to pronounce. Um, um, I think my story goes um, back in 1998, uh, 1997, around that time, uh, I met uh, Dai Lao Shi, and uh, uh, we met uh, during our university time. And uh, the first time that we met, he started to talk about all the nonsense, you know, <laughs> the, the universe, <laughs> the chi. <qi. laughs> and then I was like amazed and uh, uh, cannot help to listen to all those nonsense. Um, and then later on, he introduced me to uh, practice Qigong. So Dai Lao Shi, teacher Dai, is my first teacher. Um, I learned the Zhen Qi Gong from him. And uh, not just that, actually, um, since then, we are together. And in the past 20 something years, uh, we are on the journey of uh, learning Qi Gong and experiencing Qi Gong. Everything in our life is about Qi and Qi Gong. So there are so many things to share. And, um, and I found that uh, why uh, two of us are so connected is all because of this, this chi, this, this life. And then we share a wonderful life together because we have this common um, desire and common goal, you know, in the whole this, in our, in our whole life. So, and also I was always being inspired by um, Teacher Dai's insight about everything. You know, he had very unique insights about the qi, about qigong, about everything, like how to deal with the relationship, how to, what is love and what is all many things that people have talked about, but never got, the, you know, got different opinion about. And his unique insights actually inspire me a lot to dig deep um, and then find my self. And especially after uh, we um, got Dr. Pang's new book, and then we started to learn to read and not to experience at the same time, I found that I go even deeper and to gradually find my true heart. Uh, so I feel very, very deeply, deeply impressed and deeply touched by all these. Uh, I, I think I don't have to spend too much time about talking about myself, so you can let uh, Dai Lao Shi to continue. Okay, but actually you can take it live. You. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Okay, everyone, um, my name is uh, 
Jing Dei, but uh, actually in Chinese they pro pronounce the Dai. Uh, it's uh, D A I. So it is uh, confused for some people. It, it's hard to pronounce, like uh, how to pronounce it. Is Dai or is it Dei? So I say, if you want to call me, uh, just call me Teacher Dai. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> or Mr. Dai, because in we we through our pr pr um, practicing uh, something has to be let go. That means something has to die. Then a new self can be born. So my name maybe sometime is just a remind for you, like uh, you met me today, then an old self died today, a new self is born. <laughs> that would be a good meaning for that. <laughs> yes. So I was just like most people, like uh, when I was young and uh, so curious about a lot of things. I was so conscious about things around us and always think about why this, uh, why this works like this and how this, the universe works, why we are here. So it's always intrigued me. So I read a lot of books like uh, uh, about dreams, about so many different mysteries and uh, uh, nat supernatural ability. I think a lot of people are interested in that. But they never answered my question. So in 1987, uh, in Shanghai, there was some uh, infection of type 2 liver disease happening mm -hmm. at that time and it's spreading across the city. And my father, unfortunately, kept caught it. And he was staying in the hospital for a while. At that time, my uncle introduced the Zhenan Qigong to my father. So since then, my father practiced just for months, and he was totally healed. And, but at that time, there was some, this news. A lot of people didn't make it. So when he came back home, he started to teach us. So we, we followed him to learn. But at that time, as a teenager, I really didn't believe it. So I think it's just doing this movement, I, don't, I, can feel, I cannot feel anything, <laughs> no matter how long I do, I don't know what feeling. But later, my father attended some Qigong class. He brought back uh, Dr. Pang's book. So, you know, if you, you have that book, uh, eight books, eight, eight books yeah. in a row, mm -hmm. this is for, for the Qigong teacher training. Mm -hmm. So he, he brought back those books and I start to read, this, read those books. And Dr. Pang's the theory about the Qigong entirety theory really opened my mind. I read all of them. I was fascinated about this scientific view of Qigong uh, Dr. Pang gave us and answered a lot of my questions. And since then, I started to seriously practice Zunan Qigong. So that was maybe uh, 14 years old, like that. At that time, Qigong uh, was very popular in China. You can see a lot of people practice all kinds of Qigong in park. Zunan Qigong teacher also hosted workshops and uh, other big functions hosted in like a, a studio, like mm -hmm. all of the, uh, country. the mm -hmm. theaters. So in Shanghai, they also have those kind of activity and I went to several functions. Over there, people has, uh, had a, a broken arms they get on the stage and the, the teacher just give, give them healing and within a few minutes they can hold up like a hold up the cup, the, the bottle of water, you know. It's like a miracle. Some people went in on a wheelchair after teacher gave healing for them and they can stop and start stand up and walk. It's like a miracle happened right in front of my eyes. So I, I decide. Right at that moment, I want to be a Qigong teacher because I always want to help other people. And uh, this is like a, a dream. Like I, I, I hold on to this kind of dream. One day I want to go to Hua Jia Zinan Qigong Center and I want to meet Dr. Pang in person. So finally, the dream came, came true in 1996. Uh, I was in, in university. It's the second year, it's the summer, summer break. So I have two months time. So I decided to go to Hua Xia Zhenan Qigong Center. So that was a very great experience. I still remember every every day we we line up, uh, hold, hold a little stool, and uh, we march to the square, line up 
practice lift chi up and three centers merge and that that chi field is so strong so strong and also uh, a few days dr pong lead us in the, the, the practice that was amazing and every day we sound the song school theme song composed by dr pong uh, when we march into the to the squares mm -hmm. so he actually composed several songs, different songs. Every song he composed using his heart. He put his um, heart into it. When we sing it, we can feel this connection with Dr. Pao. And that still inspired me. And uh, Dr. Pao always inspired me all the time. So at that time, so I joined the teacher training and I after went back to uh, my university, I start to organize Qigong group to teach you, teach people, including I my so, one of them. Time, so. <laughs> mm -hmm. This is how we get to know each other. So when when we immigrant, uh, 2002, mm -hmm. 2002, we immigrant, we, we together immigrant to Canada. Uh, the first thing we did is to connect with a group of Zenon Qigong practitioners. Mm -hmm. They helped me a lot helped us settle down in the in this country it's very it's not we're not familiar with this country at that time and uh, helped us settle down in, in this country and i helped this group with teaching them and uh, leading the group practice so at that time in the same around that time 2002 um Huaxia Qigong center was was closed unfortunately it was closed so i was thinking um, how to introduce Zinan Qigong to Western world. Because here people also want to live a better life. They're also looking at things that uh, can help them uh, to, to, to get well-being. Yeah. So, but there is uh, quite a few cultural differences. We cannot ignore that because we tried a lot to how to teach them, just teach them the form and teach them some yeah. series. But something missing, I, I feel there's something missing. When we, so during the years we live in Canada, we start to, to see from the, the perspective of Western culture, mm -hmm. it's different from our Chinese way of seeing things. So we also followed several uh, different motivational speaker in very famous in Western world, such as Bob Proctor, Tommy Robinson and their series about how they perceive this universe, how they help people to, to get a better life. So including the very famous law of attraction, I mm -hmm. think most people, a lot of people heard about the secret. Mm -hmm. And we, it's almost 10 years ago. Since yeah, it's more than 10 out. years ago. Mm -hmm. It's also it impact our life a lot. And then we found that there are so many connections between Eastern and the Western culture, but they have they have different perspective to see things, see the world. They help us to understand something, understand uh, uh, the Western world. So we think we have to do something about this. We cannot just simply introduce something to people here, mm -hmm. uh, ignore their culture totally. We, if we want to really help them, to help them connect better with uh, what we learned, so we need to change it, change things up. Mm -hmm. So two years ago, um, that's 2017, so that, um, we, I took my whole family from uh, here to China to practice Qigong. That was a uh, total uh, eight people. Mm -hmm. uh, your your parents, my parents, uh, including my two kids, mm -hmm. so eight people in total. It's a big group. Quite a scene. <laughs> so at that time, uh, in in the time during the time we practiced in uh, in China, something happened, changed my life totally. So in the second week, I felt the severe pain in my lower back. I always feel I'm, uh, I'm healthy <laughs> because I practice Qigong since uh, very young. So I'm very healthy and seldom caught a, a 
uh, a code, Cat never, never catch cold or mm -hmm. a cold or something. No, the, but I found a severe pain in my lower back, and I found blood in my urine. So I went to a hospital to check up through ultrasound, through CT. They discovered there was a, there was a kidney stone. It was dropped from my kidney into my ureter. You know the diameter of the ureter averagely was just. 0.3 centimeter, very small cube, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But the stone is uh, 1.2 centimeter, you know? It's 1.2 and uh, against uh, the still 0.3 centimeter, <laughs> it's huge. It's huge. So the doctor said it was too big. I cannot get it out through natural way, you know? Through natural way, people do like drink a, drink a lot of water and they jump up and down, jump and down to get the stone out. You can do that. Mm -hmm. But for me, it was too big. To get it out through this way, so they suggested surgery through surgery. You know, they're gonna draw draw three holes on my back and uh, uh, shatter this stone into pieces to get it out. I said no, I, I don't want to do this, so I refused. I wanted to get it out through qigong practice because we have a lot of uh, example cases happening in the in, in before the in the past. Mm -hmm. People tumors, cancer disappeared through mm -hmm. practice Qigong. And also people get it stoned out through practice Qigong. So I want to do this as well because I know Qigong works. So we created Qi field and send a good message to kidney, to the stone. You know, that, that was a big stone. In the beginning, I was thinking maybe let it go in, out. Not, how, how to get, get it out? If I shut it into pieces, it maybe created like a sharp edge. It, Maybe dangerous for that. Mm -hmm. uh, so I put a message to let the stone disappear, just disappear, just dissolve and disappear. So now, now we after we practiced few 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 days, we kept practicing. I feel the pain was reduced. In the night, still very painful. In the night, I cannot sleep. The pain was like twisting. It's twisting pain all the time because it's in the tube. You want to get out. So it's twisting all the time. I heard from other people t telling me this, this kind of pain, just like uh, women give Giving birth, birth to a baby, this <laughs> kind of pain, okay? So I, I didn't know that, but now I totally experience it from my body, okay? <laughs> this is a good, uh, good experience, actually. <laughs> So I couldn't sleep for a few days. No matter how I turn my body, this side, that side, getting up and walk, wouldn't help, couldn't help. And also I do a lot to practice. I focus on my style. I do sport sporting, I do Chen Chi. It's still there. The pain is just like this. So at, at the beginning, I was fighting the pain. I was fighting, I want to get rid of the pain. I lie down, I sort of doing everything. But none of them really helped. So at last, I just stopped fighting, fighting. I think that's not gonna work. I lie down there, lie down there. I just look at it, look at this pain. And I think, if I were dead, my body certainly could not feel the pain, yeah? Would you ever see a, a dead body that uh, if you put a needle on it, you can get up and running? No, <laughs> because the body cannot feel it. But who's feeling the pain? It's certainly not body, right? Body. So if, it's me. If I'm, I, I'm this mind and I feel this pain, so this pain is created by my mind. So if I create it, so I can let it go. I just look at it and I, I talk to this pain. I say, please, you, if you want to come, you just come, okay? You want to let me see how painful it, you can be. You just let it come. And just set it. I just lie down and watch it. And suddenly this pain reduced. When you stop fighting it, when you look at it, and then you just Thanks. let it happen, and it just happened differently. And it just dissolved, getting like a reduced. And I finally fell in sleep after five days. So this pain actually helped me to concentrate, to look at something that I never looked at before. It helped me gradually to realize it, realize this is my body and my mind could be separated from me. And uh, right after that, I, I had this long sleep. I, this is really good long sleep in this far, uh, past five days. 
So a few days later, I flew back to Canada. On the plane, I was uh, I was doing Lachi, you know, on this plane, long long hour flight, uh, more than 12 10, hours. twelve hours, nothing to do. Sitting in the plane doing Lachi is really good practice. <laughs> so it's an airplane, you know, airplane flowing floating in the air. It's very easy for us, to like, a, oh, imagine we're floating in the air, surrounded by this chi chi field, right, supported. So somehow I feel I connect with the universe. I visualize she around, inside, she everywhere, and the boundary between me and the between me and the surroundings, like the chairs, the train, start to disappear. They, they start to dissolve into transparent. So I feel this pain, a plane disappeared. I just like floating in the in the universe. Only she supporting me. I have this massive like unconditional love from this universe and the universe supported our life right from the beginning i start to realize this this life this from it's different from our body and mind our body and mind is just like too much in our life all through those years and just how let us uh, cannot see the truth from it now i just come down and really through this eye to look inward, I found that actually there's no difference from, from the universe energy. So we're just to ignore, nor to aware this. Now I feel this love and oneness, everything outside, inside, no different. I didn't know how long I was in that state. When I came back to normal conscious, my face and chest were covered with, with tears. You know, I was, I'm not that kind of person who just cry in the public. <laughs> you know, but, but I cannot hold these tears. It just touched my heart. So I, after I came back home, I went to see my family doctor. He sent me to do ultrasound. I want to check the stone. But at the time, I didn't feel any pain after I came back. When the result came out, the doctor asked, he looked into my eye very curiously and asked me, <laughs> Jing, are you sure you went to the hospital and checked? I said, yeah. Why you ask? I did in check China, yeah, in China. China. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He said, there was no stone detected anywhere in your body. So at that time, I, I just surprised. Actually, it, it, I was expect this, right? I want this stone to disappear, but it still amazed me. It's like a miracle happened, right? On my body, because I, I was totally healthy and whole. <laughs> so like, you know, I see a lot, I saw a lot of miracles happen. But it, it happened on me, it's totally different. So then I got this incredible chance to taste the true nature of life. And uh, since then, I connect with this life. You know, a lot of people happen also. In their, uh, in their body and in their life because this physical problem like a, a, a severe pain. They also got sick and become miserable. They want so much to get rid of this disease and they, they go for a medicine drug and uh, um, surgeries, a lot of different ways to get rid of these symptoms. And also like a Qigong and yoga, and a lot of different natural healing ways people go through this kind of, because they, said, they saw this disease as their uh, biggest enemy. So they, they want to reject it, they hate it. But this is why they are suffering. So now I know the disease is not actually your enemy. You need to treat it differently. In the same year, um, unfortunately, my other two uncles passed away they, within two months after diagnosed with cancer. That hurt me even more than the pain in my body because I didn't have a chance to let them know this and pass this message, help them to realize actually the cancer is not your enemy to fight because they fight it and they lost. Mm -hmm. I think it, is not, it was not the cancer let them pass away. It was their fear, the fear in them. So they realized I must stand out to deliver that message to more people. So uh, later at that year, I established this nonprofit organization, Energy Institute. 
So this is uh, how I uh, get to know Zinan Qigong and uh, uh, all these years, what happened to me and the recent years, what changed me a lot and helped us to do something. And finally, I get up, get stand out, want to do something to, to deliver this message to more people. And the last June, I went to China, attended a conference. It was held in Jiangxi University of TCM. Uh, it's about, it was about the scientific research on qi and the mind. Mm -hmm. On the, it, it was three days conference. We didn't expect uh, uh, Dr. Pang will come. Most of the, us uh, were uh, qigong, zineng qigong practitioner. But on the last day of the conference, Dr. Pang suddenly appeared in person mm -hmm. without notice. <laughs> so everybody was surprised and burst into joyful tears. It was 20, almost 20, uh, over 20, over 20 years, years, over mm -hmm. 20 years since we last saw Dr. Pang. He, he gave a lecture and uh, uh, also he met his former uh, students mm -hmm. together. And uh, I haven't got a chance to talk to him in person, but big group. yeah, big group. Mm -hmm. But at the same year, uh, last uh, September, just three months later, mm -hmm. me and Delphine went back to Beijing. We were there to connect with a group of Zinan Qigong teachers. On the last day, out of <laughs> out of surprise, <laughs> Doctor Doctor Tang came mm -hmm. to the to the to the place to the building the to the group. Mm -hmm. So I, it was totally out of our expectation. When he showed up, all teacher there cried, and everyone, almost twenty teachers that were there, mm -hmm. and we sang Hua Hua Xia Qigong Center song together. We we told the Doctor Pang, the me and um, Delphine personally talked to Doctor Pang about mm -hmm. the plan to go back to Canada, how to. Um, deliver those messages and uh, the Zunan Qigong theory to help more people, he was clearly aware of it and he encouraged us. And then we had photo with Dr. Pang. He shook hands with all teachers, just like uh, old tradition in Kwa Cha Zunan Qigong Center. Oh, this is the photo so we can share with everyone. Yeah, show yours. Yeah, show. Oh, me? Yes. I want to show your face. <laughs> <laughs> you can see it? This is me and this is Dr. Pang. Yes, <laughs> and, and the other one, the other, the other side hands. is we, when we're shaking hands. Mm -hmm. Great, and this is yours. Yeah, just, <laughs> just, just this one. This one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. She got to shake with Dr. Pang's hands um, when she, this is the first time she My met Dr. Pang in person and she got mm -hmm. the chance to shake Dr. Pang's hand. Oh, that's really uh, lucky. lucky, right? Because in, in Zinan Qigong Center, we shake Dr. Pang's hand, Dr. Pang's hand. It was like a tradition every month, happening every month. So Dr. Pang stood in, in the center. Everybody lined up one by one to greet Dr. Pang and uh, shake Dr. Pang's hand. When he, Dr. Pang said, when we shaking his hand, he will say, Ni hao. That means, in, if you translate just like a, a hi, how are you doing? Like, mm -hmm. you, ni hao. But actually, Dr. Pang said, when I say ni hao, I'm giving a delivered message to you. It's hao, la message. It's everything's wonderful, everything's fine, everything's perfect mm -hmm. in you. It's happening. So when, when he said that, we just absorb the yeah. message, accept this message into our, we don't, we don't just send it back, say ni hao <laughs> back. So every time we do this, just go and shake hand and uh, Dr. Pang say ni hao. Ni hao, one by one. And when, when I first time to shake Dr. Pang, shake Dr. Pang's hand, his hand was like a baby's hand. It's so soft. You cannot feel this bone or something, like a, two clouds. It's two clouds in my hand. It's so wonderful. And also this time, still the same. And Dr. Pang looked into, like into a vast universe, his eyes so deep. Through you. It's through me. It's not, not like it's looking, <laughs> it's looking through me. I'm just like chi. Yeah, actually we are chi, right? Chi. 
And at the meeting, Dr. Fang told us he would publish a new book in two months. We were all very, excited. very excited about the new book. And this book is about the study for history, how Chinese people learn and uh, discover the, the heart, the true heart. So once this book was published, we purchased the one and immediately to start it. This book is so amazing. This is this book. Mm -hmm. I know um, maybe so many people of you guys already wanted to get wanted this to get, copy. Uh, check, about, <laughs> check this book, want to know what's this book talking about, mm -hmm. right? And uh, after we reading this book, we, we know we can feel we can feel how much time a lot of time and energy dr pang had put in this book from from this book from from his book um, my own experience i totally understand why dr pang had recent books is all talking about this heart this true heart mm -hmm. right? he so several, books. several books this is about um, how to do a traditional acupuncture about... No, this is not acupuncture. Oh, no, no. This was, the practice. Was talking, but so. The traditional, maybe Qigong practice. You know, all about the traditional Qigong practice. Yeah, this one is about the acupuncture. This is acupuncture. acupuncture. The, Dr. Pang used to be acupuncture doctor, right? And his way of doing acupuncture is quite unique. It's different from all the other uh, acupuncturists because he's using the qi and also he deeply know, know um, into which, um, the, into which level um, this can, can be make, make difference yeah. if he do this kind of acupuncture. So he wrote this book um, to, how to say, to reveal his secrets. Yeah. Yeah. I think it will help uh, even um, uh, the traditional acupuncture. acupuncture. Mm -hmm. And this book is about uh, uh, Zen. Zen practice, Zen Buddhist practice, Zen. Practice mm -hmm. people. And this is from for Confucianism. Con, from Confucianism. Confucianism. The, mm -hmm. uh, practice. Way. So all about this true heart, about this true heart. Without tasting this true heart and uh, the true nature of life, all practice is just like a fitness practice. All those years of practice, like a, just like fitness practice. If we only focus on form and theory, people will never understand the true nature of life and the full potential of Qigong. So all those years of practice were merely scratching the surface. Just as Dr. Pang mentioned in, in this book, true practice will start when practitioners experience the nature of true heart. So, so you see, a lot of people start to practice Qigong because they want healing, they want something changed on their body, or uh, this kind of thing. But when you start to experience true heart, actually the healing will naturally come, just like me. Right? Dr. Pang promote Qigong healing at the beginning uh, simply because it did a lot of, it can attract people the okay. attention. But people, people will never look at Qigong if they <laughs> always feel healthy okay. and yeah. comfortable. <laughs> they will never look at Qigong. So when, when something wrong happening, and also medical doctors say there's nothing they can do, then people start to open their eyes and uh, look at everywhere to find other alternative, alternative ways mm -hmm. to heal them. But after these so many years, if people still look at Qigong as the practice and just for healing, they didn't miss the whole picture. So this is the, uh, this is the message Dr. Pao wants to deliver to this world. So Qigong is not only solution for healing. It is actually you heal yourself. You are the solution. So Qigong is just one of these tools to help you to open up and heal. So you see Dr. Dr. Pang did not even mention Qigong once in this entire book. But this book gave a lot of true story of uh, those past masters and the sages and how they experience the true self and heal the, suddenly heal themselves totally. Yeah, so that's why I start to focus on not only form and uh, uh, this technique of theories, I start to move from my focus about teaching. And uh, it, actually it's not like teaching, it's like uh, just spread this message and deliver those messages to open people's eyes to look 
looking to yourself. It's in you. It's always there. How to open up? How to open this door? You know, uh, Qigong is just a key. You got this key because you want to open some door, right? Mm -hmm. But all this time, you forgot this door. You hold on this key, and you can you you don't, <laughs> don't know where you don't know where to put to it. You, you want to. <laughs> You want to put it there or put it there. You want to uh, uh, polish it and make it beautiful. Shine. Make it shine. Mm -hmm. But you forgot this key is to open some door. But you, you just don't know where is the door. And I want to deliver this me message. Is just let you uh, to find out where is the door to into your true heart. Or even better, if you can just tear down the wall. There's no, you don't need, even need a key. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so this is our purpose of this teaching and this uh, sharing. sharing, and uh, it it also is this uh, this retreat all about. So mm -hmm. that's what that's why I call myself now. It's not just a teacher. I might call myself a, a life coach. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I want to deliver this message. I help people to feel the true heart, feel the true life of themselves. So qigong forms technique is right now. Uh, many other teachers. Many other teachers teach, and uh, we have different point of view of this, and want to deliver differently. Mm -hmm. Yes, and uh, now let's. Um, this is uh, I, I just oh, talk right. about uh, how I met Dr. Pang last year, and also about this book, and also a little bit about this retreat. Mm -hmm. and what are we going to talk about? We're going to uh, experience. Also, I think you have uh, questions, questions a lot of questions about. Yeah, um, I think um, most, some people talking about true self and talking about uh, uh, a bigger self or some kind of this kind of uh, terms. But I think a little bit, maybe there is some little difference and the confusion, com confusion about this. This two Term. terms. Mm -hmm. um, when they say true self and uh, a big self, it sometimes it's maybe coming from the Western uh, psychological, psychological and Term. terms and the philosophy about uh, the true self. Uh, here we have to make make sure the self. Who, who is the self? This you have to tell, because sometimes you you don't know. You're maybe saying from. Uh, the ego point of view, and uh, when you say my true self, if it's still coming from your ego, it's still not the true, true, the true one, you know. So because you cannot clearly tell which is yourself, which is maybe an even deeper self, mm -hmm. it's hard to tell if you not have the total consciousness about this different level of mindset, a different kind of self. It's existed. Mm -hmm. So when we say that, so that's why we call it true heart. True mm -hmm. heart is right into the core of any layer of self you can you can call it. Mm -hmm. So we, we don't say it's true self because if you say true self, you put on some label on it. Okay, this is myself, and uh, mm -hmm. I, this is my character, and this, this is, is my, me. Yeah. And uh, maybe you got a little better than before, but is it? True, true you. Is this is really true you, and uh, no more inside, right? Mm. So that's why we don't call it true self, uh, bigger, bigger self. I want to say, actually, this is the whole process to dissolve yourself. Only dissolve yourself, you can connect with the true nature, right. isn't? It? If you have still have self over there, so <laughs> what? <laughs> what's the connection with the true nature of this universe? So we call it true heart. Actually, this heart is not also it's not a physical physical heart, <laughs> right? So uh, it's just a, a meaning. It's, it's a term we put on it because the language is so limited. We cannot like describe those things undescribable. We have to use language, use a word to describe that. But one thing you have to know is you don't limit it by these words. You go experience the meaning from it. That's why we say this book. And also some series. It's not for reading. It's it's for experience. So if we will hold on to this meaning and this word, it gonna uh, entangle you mm -hmm. into some kind of illusion or some kind of a wrong meaning of that. So we use some words to describe it, but don't just hold on to those words. Like I just I always say, uh, when I say something, 
You don't just believe me. You don't believe me a word I say. <laughs> you experience it. <laughs> so that's that's right. Okay. That's great. Right. I understand the true heart that the Dr. Pang said, and also all other sages, saints, and masters in the history who got that level, that deep level. Um, they actually experienced the true nature of the life. So you and I, everybody, we have this life. If we think of ourselves, we are separate individual ones. But actually, this life is just one. That's why we say, lots of people say that um, everyone is connected. But how deeply you can un understand this? Only from this true heart level. You can deeply not just understand it, but experience it. So that's why we wanted to deliver this important message to the world. Yeah. Yeah. So come to experience in the retreat. <laughs> yeah. Yes, totally. Yes. So, and actually the, um, about this Dr. Pang's book, the original title in China, in Chinese, uh, can be translated as, um, the history and the evolution of the heart study in China. So, you know, almost most of the chapters are talking about, you know, thousands of uh, the saints and sages um, of, um, you know, Taoist, um, Confucianist, and even the Buddhist. They are from different background, they, but they all study and experience this true heart, right? And so this long history of this discovery, experiencing by different people to prove the same message that there's this true heart is exist and everyone was born with it. Mm -hmm. You just have to experience it to find it or to awaken it. Yeah. yeah. So it's nothing to do with self or not self. It, it's uh, this core, this true nature of life. And Dr. Pang actually didn't teach any technique and method in, in this book. There is uh, actually no skill or knowledge to teach about the true heart, you know, because the true heart is choosing everyone's life. It can, it can only be experienced or realized or awakened, but never to be learned or gained or gathered. Mm -hmm. you no, know, that's why I said in the past, like, uh, I always say this book is just for reading, uh, not, not for reading, it's just you know, for experiencing, you know. So if it's a skill, it's a technique you can learn from outside, right? How to ride a bicycle, how to swim. But if you, this is born with you, how can you learn from outside? <laughs> how can you say, how do you learn to look at things? You just open up and you know how to look at. How do, how do you learn how to eat? You, you're just born with it, right? Mm -hmm. And this true heart, you're born with, but not, not aware of it. Now it's time just to let, let it become, let us to conscious about this and let it open up and you will know how to like uh, do it and do other things. It's suddenly you become very clear. Yeah, we will talk We'll be talk a lot about why people cannot aware of this thing, although it's being existed all the time with us. Why is why we are blocking by this not by this true heart nature of ourselves? So that's why we're gonna cover yeah. in the in the retreat. Let people to to aware of themselves. Yeah. yeah. That's a very good question. We see a lot of people, they are trying to live in a hope. Like, uh, they, that's why everyone wants to gain more from outside, like more food, more uh, money, more comfort, more convenience, uh, more knowledge, if you say this, uh, like more happiness. It never ends because people believe that by uh, getting more, gaining more from outside, outside their life will be better. So the true nature of life is actually like this. If you, it, it's want to express itself completely, um, but it couldn't reach completeness 
by gaining more from outside. You see, that's why people go in the wrong direction. It's not the outside things that can make people a whole. No matter how it's a, like a, a, it's a material thing, uh, and or non-material thing like uh, education, business, relationship, uh, knowledge, we actually it's the uh, uh, most comfortable generation in the history, right? The technology and the science is very advanced. It creates so many uh, convenience for us, but people still lost because of this. They never look in the correct way, so they look in the wrong way, to trying to look outside. But the correct way is look inside from inner way. Mm -hmm. And because they distance from their true life, further and further, outside things too attractive. So um, they even once they solve other problem, they look outside. Mm -hmm. So the distance from their true, true nature, the true heart, it's further and further. So it's struggling and uh, suffering is inevitable. Mm -hmm. This is why. So in the retreat, we are going to uh, share you this experience, how to reconnect with yourself, going inward. And, uh, and then you will reconnect with yourself and all the different dimensions of your life will be realigned. We call a whole, that means, uh, not just one part of you is better and <laughs> the other part is just missing, not gonna be whole, yeah. right? If it's not whole, your, your life is just like a miserable. Uh, miserable. Mm -hmm. Definitely, right? So you have to understand this. It's not like one part of you, you think, oh, this I do it, I did really bad at, at this part. But mm -hmm. one dimension of yourself is missing. You're never conscious about it. You're never aware of it. You never done anything about it. Now you start to aware of this, and that things are gonna change. Everything can change dramatically because this is the nature of it. So when you are aware of it, everything can rearrange to make it a whole for yourself. Yeah. So this is why we say let's live a hundred percent whole. It's not like you have to do something about this. You need to aware of it, and something other things gonna start to happening, Evolve. happening all mm -hmm. by himself. So this yeah, sure. So is the retreat for anyone? Sure. <laughs> as long as you can breathe, you are alive, you can experience, it's for you. <laughs> it, it doesn't matter whether you have learned Qigong before or not. It doesn't matter how long you have practiced. So you will experience so many things in the retreat because it's from you it's not from it's not for me it's not for me it's for you it's not for other teachers it's not for dr pa it's not for the, the book mm -hmm. it's for you okay qigong is a tool we why we use this tool because it is used for yourself you want to live a better you want to live a better life you want to uh, have a, a well-being right so you know the sages and uh, the masters uh, in the past uh, or they enlightened they also are human. They, are also, they were also human. The <laughs> teachers, Dr. Pa, he, he is a human. <laughs> he may be more human than us. Yes. Right? Yeah. So if you are human, you want to be a full-fledged human, right? You <laughs> see, a tree can grow from a seed that small, become a full-fledged tree. A worm can, can grow from a little egg into a worm, mm -hmm. into a full-fledged worm, a bird into a full-fledged bird. How human? We want to be a full-fledged human. See, this is why we say a hundred percent whole human. There is something missing, and you don't know that. Do you want to know? It doesn't matter. You learned something before, uh, you did something. Do you want to know that? If you know that, do you want to get get deeper about this understanding from from the past experience from other sages or other masters they they've been through a lot they have this experience and shared with us from thousands and thousand years and dr pan put in this book so we can learn from and save us a thousand times thousand years thousand of years of learning okay <laughs> if you have that much time right so this is a very good chance for us to absorb this knowledge and just experience it for ourselves 
this is not the, like uh, give you another like uh, uh, you learn one more form and you can do this do that so you can show off to other people it's not about this it's not about you can do better so you can uh, live better better than other people no it's not it's about you how to you become the best version of you this is what it's about and also we uh, share this to many people uh, a lot of people realized that this happening and that they start to look things differently mm -hmm. not not just from the qigong practice way how to practice differently it's just one part of it but how to see things different how to experience us different differently and uh, after uh, many uh, many many people actually share share with us they what happened in their life so some people just maybe from the practicing uh, view they can feel deeper when they practice. It's different. Suddenly, actually, it's very easy and uh, very short period of time. When they start to experience, uh, aware of this, and they start to feel different. Whole different. Even the same movement, they feel, feel different. They feel different layers of this, this movement, and also they feel differently connect with the chi better. Uh, some, oh, I have an example. Uh, yeah, some people. Some people they they practice like before they open the, they put their feet not put together, right? Yeah. And then later they practice and they start to feel things differently before yeah. they cannot feel, and they suddenly put the feet together. Totally, they feel wow. Suddenly, they feel the oneness and the wholeness about themselves. Suddenly, they realize that why Doctor Pang always said when you practice qigong, you need to put the two legs the feet together right in the past you just do whatever you were told to do but now you'll be able to experience yourself oh my god this is a totally exactly. new experience you, in the past you just imagine like okay dr Pan told me to do so okay yeah, i do so and now you said okay it's different i have to put my legs and feet together this small little different but it's a big difference yes and i also heard that some people they open up their energy points you know, and then um, they in the past they they got those theories from the book, right? From Dr. Pang's book, and saying that okay, our chi is is flowing, how the chi is flowing, and we have this point to that point, so many energy points, right? And now they be able to experience the real existence of the energy point. They can feel how the chi flow in their body, how they flow. They can know it by themselves. They don't have to read Dr. Pang's book anymore to know the theory, to get the knowledge, because the knowledge itself is from yourself. It's, it's there always. You just don't know. Once you connect with it, you know it. You, you deeply know it. You, you don't learn from other teachers. You know it yourself. This is a huge difference. And also I know that some people, they feel more, more they become more sensible about qi. Yeah, someone told me. Like in the past, they never feel, they have no feeling about qi at all, to be honest. They've been practicing for more than 10 years, <laughs> never felt qi. All they, can, all they can do is imagine, okay, because I was told that there is qi there, you know, I, I need to feel this, okay, I imagine there's qi surrounding me. That's your imagination. That's not a real experience. Once you experience it, you suddenly it's opened up a whole new world to you. Qi is really, really existed. Your body and your mind is just too dumb, too numb to, <laughs> to perceive it. Mm. Not, not sensible at all to receive this. That's why this, this message is so important and change everything. But truly, like, like the teacher Dai said, the, the, the true part it's not for learn, it's for experience. Once you look, experience it, you connect it with the truth, everything changed. Yes. The regular practice, the experience of regular practice also changed dramatically. But, uh, but I think it's, it's different from people to people. Yes. Different people have different, different experience. The, not only the practice changed, but actually the most important, your life starts to change. And also, you will get an, an understanding, uh, as Dr. Bang said, 
the Qigong is not just a practice, the Qigong is the life itself. So you, you start to feel it every moment you, when you're living, when you're, when you're alive, when you're doing things like uh, in the daily life. And, uh, and before, some people very easily trigger their emotion. Right, things very outside things very easy to trigger their emotion, mm -hmm. and their life is just like uh, dragged them here to there by outside things, outside pe other people. Right, they are not happy. They they need other people to make them happy. Mm -hmm. And after you understand this, start to consciously about this true true self, this nature of life, then they start to go inward. In every moment in their life, they can be stay happy. So if you want, you have choice to be happy or not happy, which, which you choose. You want to choose to be happy all the time, right? Isn't it? Yeah. So the, the practice is not just for practice. It's the understanding of life, the true meaning, true nature of life. You understand this, even you're not practice, you stay in that happy state, joyful, joyful state. state. And this is the way of living. If you can apply this, uh, understanding and experience uh, in every moment, you are enlightened. Yeah. <laughs> we can say that, right? So this is not about some, uh, you have a special, this is uh, very hard to learn and no. so advanced. No, it's too basic. It's so basic, everybody, if, if you're alive, if you're alive, you should know this because you want to be a be full-fledged human being. You want to experience all of this. You want to be staying happy, staying joyful the whole life, no matter what happened outside. This is why we deliver this message. Yeah. I, I'm more of like people don't call this like a being enlightened. Yeah. Uh, this is a, a, everyone's journey to find, to experience their true heart. I would like to call that way. And and if you look deeply, it's actually is a coming back home, coming to the, the, the core, the, the very basis of our life. It's not being like enlightened to a higher level. No, it's coming back to our home. We finally find our base, find our home. Based on that base, based on that home, our life can be wonderful. Without the foundation, without the base, anything happening in life will be suffering. It's physical, physical suffering, mm -hmm. mental suffering, anything. So this is, this is not difficult or not. This is not about how much Qigong experience you had in the past. Nothing to do with this. Yeah. It's a homecoming experience. It's homecoming. Homecoming. Experience. It's not like a <laughs> homecoming. Right. <laughs> there is some technique, actually. Yes. Yes. So but, uh, through our uh, retreat, we will lead you, you guys to experience something. Yeah, because yeah, we have to show you some ways, like a, a direction, some kind of something, right? Some kind of so, road sign. Uh, <laughs> but, but don't think about this as like a theory or form or something like this. It just helps you. It's a tool. There are tools. There are tools. We can use these tools. Actually, they're opening, opening yourself. But, but who is experiences who finally understand this is the key it is yourself that's most important don't struggle uh, to focus on those little tools these are just tools yes. yeah yeah so actually you're asking two questions right yeah. one is uh, why the people always practicing but still they have haven't cannot cure themselves and uh, uh, isn't it? They got, stuck they got stuck in the middle. In the middle, even yeah. if you have no no illness or something, but you feel something missing. And another question is why oh. Dr. Pang uh, not not starting starting with, with this true heart first? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Teaching the form first, let people just practice, and and they practice so many years that couldn't yeah. couldn't solve their problem. Okay, um, you know, uh, I can uh, first answer second. the second one. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because the Dr. Wang structured this uh, like this, he designed this uh, this way. First, he teach uh, these forms and the series out uh, for people to because people cannot feel something that they, they don't know it exists, right? They they can feel this movement. They can feel the physical things like they they do something, 
or they start to feel something and uh, they want to normal people regular people to start to experience something that they can they can gather they can feel it so that's why dr Bang first introduced these forms out for every people to start to learn start to practice and i by the same time so when people more and more people practice the chi field were getting stronger and stronger in global wise and after 30 years the whole world is uh, very has very strong chi field right now and so people can much easier to get into deeper understanding of this true heart and so this is a, a time to introduce the true heart to um, more people out. I, actually, this kind of a theory uh, uh, um, uh, knowledge is not available to uh, regular people in the past mm -hmm. because people are not ready, ready for, for it. it. And you need to physically and well, uh, mm -hmm. uh, mentally prepare for it uh, through so many years of training, like traditional Qigong way. Mm -hmm. that, that not work for most people. So Dr. Pang restructured it restructured it so it takes several years to build up chi field but this right now the chi field is really really strong you can we can see a lot of things happening in this chi field before you want to treat your uh, illness and disease like uh, you, it takes some time but right now the results coming out more often mm -hmm. we can see a lot of things a, a lot of people cure their diseases very quickly uh, in several different retreats we can see that because of this chi field is really strong right now. But this is also a time to let us to get deeper into the true heart because a lot of people with, we know it's stuck with the practice. Yeah. They, they cannot go deeper because they don't know and there is other dimension of them uh, exist. They're still like stuck into this physical, physical, physical. form, physical dimension. Mm -hmm. You know, even we say we have a different dimension, we have a, uh, like a physical body, we have our mental, mental mind. mind, we can say it's mind, and also our emotion, and also chi, we can call this energy, but they are also totally, they are all physical. They are not non-physical. They're still physical. They are still physical. So everything physical has limitation, has limitation. If you want to go liberate yourself, you want to go deeper and touch the true heart, you have to go beyond the physical. If you stay in the physical, how can you go beyond? So there is some way to let you open up and let go of this physical dimension, step into non-physical. So this is what about this true heart. That if everybody learn the knowledge and they just study and practice, they all stay in this physical dimension. They don't know. They are stay, still stay yeah. in, the, in the physical dimension. Whatever you want to do, you want to cure your disease, you want to uh, maybe uh, open more and learn more but you know the disease itself is actually um, a symptom right it's just like a, you feel pain or you feel feel something you think this is a symptom yeah but actually the disease the cancer or something else is also a symptom something happened in, in, other, dimension. in other dimension that's why in physical dimension it manifest, manifested manifested so the all physical dimension is a, mass, is a manifestation of something else. So all this disease and this uh, cancer thing, all these problems manifest by something. You're not touching the core the, of the problem. You're not touching the root of the problem. You just scratch the surface. So you want to remove the symptom. Mm -hmm. It's not going to solve the problem. I see a lot of people, they, they cure their disease and the tumors disappeared. And, but after a while, it come back. Why? Because the root is still there. Hmm. The root, it, it didn't touch it. Its root is in, in another dimension. dimension. Never touched it. No, they never touched it. And they think, oh, I, I get better. Yes, your body, your physical body is getting better. Okay, your mind may be stable and your chi is stronger, but the root of your life is not being touched. You never know that. Stay there and it's also distorted. So. Yes. If it's distorted and it's missing something, so the problem then is still coming back. This is why. So that's why we are gonna let people know, uh, stop looking at dim physical dimension, stop that and start to feel more, open your, open your eyes and tear down your walls. <laughs> so 
I think this is going to help them go further. Much further, much yeah. deeper, yeah. Yes, that's why uh, we also give people a chance to uh, get some messages first, initial messages. Um, so people who sign up with our retreat, uh, they will also get a, a Dragon Spine Method teaching online course. That will be a six week to seven weeks uh, learning. Uh, we highly suggest that people sign up and learn these first because in those online courses, we not only teach uh, a form, because this form teaching is it's not just about another form. This form is to prepare your mind and the body for receiving this transformational message going deeper. So, and also during the, this online course, we're gonna teach not only the form, but also giving a little bit, a little bit message about this, about the true heart. We'll talk a little bit, a little bit. So that when people come to the workshop, they already get some sense. And uh, when we gradually um, into the retreat, everybody's body and the mind is fully prepared for receiving and for transforming themselves. So that's the, that's the idea behind. About this. Um, yeah, I think I just have to emphasize that uh, this true heart is not, is not the form or method or skills or another knowledge or any theory or philosophy. Although we translate the book into philosophy of the heart, but actually it's not a philosophy. It's, um, a, it's simply a truth within each one of the life yes. existing. Mm -hmm. So um, why so many people experiencing different sufferings, no matter it's physical suffering or mental sufferings is because we ignore this truth in ourself. So in order to live as a whole, we simply just accept this truth. And then you will find that, oh, then life was so wonderful, full of joy, full of peace. You know, I know that lots of people talking about being uh, peaceful, peace, but the peace the peace is, is the life itself. If you just talk about it, you don't get it. You feel peace and joyful inside. Not just every day shouting, peace, peace, no. It's different. And then this health, people are so, so caught up and, and looking for health and looking for uh, living a better life. You have to understand that this health or wealth, these are just the effect, you know? Once we can deal with the cause, which is our self, the true heart, then we don't really need to pursue anything at all. That is, that is so-called Wu Wei by Lao Tzu, you know? What is Wu Wei? Wu Wei is we have, we can literally have anything and everything without doing anything. Okay, now, nowadays, all the people are not being themselves, not doing, uh, not being a human being because we all be, we are trying to do something. We are the human doings. Can you see this? We're doing so many things. We wanted to you know, do qigong, we do yoga, we do this and that. It seems glory, very glory, right? We, we know qigong, okay, we know yoga, we can practice, we can practice that. But this all doing, just putting down the doing and starting being, then you will be more close to the true heart. So once we can get being a human being, then we can really understand what Lao Tzu means by Wu Wei, which is actually doing nothing. Mm -hmm. And then we can have everything. That is the art of living. Mm 